We're here in front of the Rohrbach house. No one's seen the man in 40 years. I'm just going to knock. Wish me luck. Mr. Rohrbach! I knew this was an impossible assignment. Hopeless, Henry. I don't think we're going to get anything. Mr. Rohrbach! Don't you have something better to do with your time? No, 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 no questions! Get out of here! Get out of here! No cameras! No cameras! I'm sorry about your cameraman. But writing's a tough game. It's not like playing music. I'm sure the Authors Guild will pay for his hospitalization or funeral, whatever is required. Tell us about Matt Hepler. Uh, Matt was a, I would say, uh, a wild man. His uh, in his parents' kitchen, as a matter of fact, there was this ornate frame with a plaque, and uh, inside it was this big butcher knife, and the plaque said, The Knife of Learning. And apparently Mac had, Matt had uh, attacked his father with that knife uh, during a LSD trip. Uh, he looked about 35. Uh, I think he'd been in high school for seven or eight years. I remember one day uh, Matt had the idea to uh, light his car on fire. Of course, after 20 minutes or so, there was quite a plume of smoke, and it was it was beautiful to look at. I and mean, he would not let the fire department on his property. He said, "This is my property. I can burn whatever I want." <laughs> now, for my money, the fire department putting out the car was just as exciting as burning it. Tell us about the music. He felt that he was channeling Jimi Hendrix. We'd play Voodoo Child for, you know, 90 minutes, two hours at a time. It should have been a drag for me being a keyboard player and Jimi Hendrix no keyboards, but there was one album with the Voodoo Child with Stevie Winwood playing on it. Were you involved in any drug activity? Uh, I experimented a, with a lot of stuff in high school. Um, you know, never got into it very heavily. Uh, no more than a few pounds of pot here and there, and uh, uh, some LSD uh, rarely. Well, I suppose there were drugs and everything else that I didn't know about. In fact, there were all kinds of things I didn't know about. <laughs> we have this record from Norwalk Hospital. Oh, yeah. Well, you are an investigative reporter. All right, well, I'll tell you the story. Uh, a friend and I had bought a big uh, temple ball. They're called these balls of hashish from Nepal. And uh, he left, and I fell asleep on the couch. And at that time, I smoked heavily. And my hand drifted down where it rested on my hip. And shortly, my pants caught on fire. And I ended up at, as your paperwork says, I ended up at Norwalk Hospital. Well, that's a good question, why Rapsons would hire us, a bunch of high school kids. I think Matt was very persuasive and uh, kind of famous in his own way. He uh, went over there and talked to them one afternoon and asked them why there was no music on Sunday nights. And the answer was, there's no customers on Sunday nights. And so Matt promised they'd have customers. And the way that he'd, he would do it is, he was playing, he said, with Stevie Winwood, who was, uh, you know, the soloist in the Spencer Davis group's uh, Give Me Some Lovin'. Give me, give me some lovin'. Give me some lovin'. <laughs> give me some lovin'. Give me some lovin'. Every day. Da -bum 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 -bum. Here comes on. Da -da. Ba -ba. Big hammer sound. Da -da 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 -da. You know, uh, you've heard it. Uh, so when I walked in the bar the first time, Matt hadn't told me about this subterfuge, and I'd never been greeted with such 
respect. It was a good feeling. The owners' names were Larry and Elliot. I don't, I don't think they were gay. I mean, no one was gay in those days. Not as far as I know. That's a, that's a new thing, isn't it? We called ourselves the Oscar Davis Band. I, I don't know why exactly. I think it was my idea. I was very into the blues, and uh, it just sounded like a kind of a blues band kind of name. In the first week, no one came. Second week, no one. Third week, Matt claimed it was their fault. I mean, here they had the the organ player for the Spencer Davis Band, and they had uh, uh, a guy who was Jimi Hendrix's reincarnation. Uh, how come they couldn't sell it? So Larry and Elliot, being equanimous guys, took an ad out in the New York Times. And uh, sure enough, the next week, Sunday, the place was packed. I remember we worried about you going down there when we found out where you were playing. I, yeah, that was a rough place. Yeah, I told my parents it was a teen uh, club. It was a dive for crying out loud. Who were you dating at the time? I was dating Linda, a girl named Linda, who was new in town from New Jersey. And uh, for our first date, I invited her to the Capitol Theater. The Capitol Theater in Portchester was direct competition to the Fillmore East in the village and much easier to get to. Uh, it was a great first date uh, because it's so loud you can't talk, you don't have to say anything. And uh, I found a bottle of Matus uh, Rosé that was the height of cool wine as far as I was concerned. Also, it was Portchester, a scary town that I knew my way around. Yeah, I knew where to park and people said hello to me because they knew me from the uh, from Rapsons, you know. She well, didn't well, ask why they called me Oscar or alternately Stevie. Yo, Stevie. And we got along great and uh, she became my girlfriend and was my girlfriend for a year or so and uh, it, right into as I went to college till she dumped me. That's so sad Mr. Rohrbach. And what became of Matt? The rumor is that he uh, chained himself to the Denver courthouse steps and uh, blew himself up with dynamite. <laughs>